Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be trying out Windows Nashville build 999 compiled on the 28th of November 1995. Uh, this doesn't require you to set the BIOS date and right now as of August 2021 it is the only leaked build of Windows Nashville. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do this. Now I need to put in an MS-DOS boot disk. And then I need to put in my Windows Nashville boot disk. No, not boot disk. My Windows Nashville ISO. I'm not great with commentary. So, uh, so we're just gonna reboot here, and we should be booting into the MS DOS 6.22 boot disk. Now, uh, usually you would have to upgrade from the RTM build of Windows 95, but uh, there is a way around that, and I'm gonna show you guys how you can work around the upgrade and do a clean install of Windows Nash Nashville. So first we're going to want to type in fdisk. This is going to set up the disk partition, the FAT16 partition, which is limited to 2 gigabytes. You can't install this build on FAT32 partitions, which can do more than 2 gigabytes. So I forgot to set the boot order. Uh, just going to do that real quick. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. Alright, so now we are back. What we're going to need to do is format the C drive. And the slash s parameter uh, copies the command, the actual command interpreter to the C drive. So we're gonna have to format the drive slash s, and boom, there we go. Now, uh, what we're gonna want to do is echo greater than symbol c nt ldr. Now this is going to trick the system into thinking there's a Windows NT installation. There is not. Uh, so real quick, we're gonna have to copy everything uh, to a folder on the C drive. So uh, I'm just gonna call this Nashville. So now we're gonna, oh my god, okay, now we're gonna have to copy everything on the CD-ROM to the Nashville folder. Now, why this is, is because we, like, okay. When you use an MS-DOS boot disk like this, it it doesn't really read the CD-ROM driver after it tells you to remove the disks, because the boot disk is where the CD-ROM driver is located. So, now we can just, whoops, now we can just go to the Nashville folder here and set up. And should work. There we go. Uh, welcome to Windows 95 setup. It calls itself Windows 95 everywhere except in only around two or three places. So, uh, it's repairing the setup wizard. It's, it's obviously gonna need that to install the operating system. We're gonna accept the end user license agreement. We're going to continue. And uh, yeah, so the echo thing, it trick the system into thinking there was a copy of Windows NT installed on the system when there really was not. So we're going to go ahead and click next. We're going to click next. And it's going to prepare the Windows directory which Windows Nashville is going to be installed in. It's going to check for available disk space. There is. So we're going to pick custom here. Now I need, I'm just going to put in my name and company here. Now I don't have a company so I just put in Orbitron and that's it. So. We're gonna click next for it to analyze my virtual machine here. And now we're going to pick both of these. We have both of these. For vital system functions, we're gonna have to use networking. Well, not vital system functions, but functions that I'm gonna to wanna to show off later in the video. So we're gonna click next. I'm just gonna analyze the type of hardware in my computer. This is gonna take a minute or two. So I just wait while this is doing its thing. Okay, so now we're not going to enable any of this, we don't really need it, so we're going to click next. Now we're going to enable most of these, um, except Microsoft Fax and the Microsoft Network. Uh, Microsoft Athena is something we will check out later, so we're going to click next. And now this is the part where we're going to be setting up the networking, so uh, I'm, I'll have the configuration that I used in the description, uh, so what I'm going to do is add, click adapter, add, and add uh, AMD, AMD PC Net, Family Ethernet Adapter, PCI, and ISA. 
So we're going to click OK. Now we're going to go to Protocol. Now we're going to go to Microsoft and TCP IP. This is going to enable the actual networking. I don't think that actually enabled it. So, okay, we're going to want to click TCP IP. <laughs> there we go. So now we're going to click this properties, uh, IP address. Hmm. Okay, whatever. We're going to go to IP address. Uh, uh, I'll do 10. Dot zero dot two dot fifteen. Now this isn't the actual IP address. I'm just following the instructions on the eighty six box to YouTube channel tutorial, really. So two five five, two five five, two five five, and zero. That is the IP subnet mask. So now we're going to go into gateway. Now uh, ten dot zero dot two dot two, and for the DNS configuration. Uh, the host, it could be anything you want. You don't need a domain. And for the DNS server search order, we're going to put 10.0.2.3. And we're going to add. And that's basically going to be it. So, we're going to click next and next. Uh, just to review this, our settings, I'm going to change my language to English Canadian. Click next. No, I don't want a startup disk. And next. And now it is going to copy the files to your computer. So, I will see you guys after that is done at the desktop. Okay, so copying files already seems to be done. So, what we're going to do is take out the floppy disk here, and we're going to click finish, and it is going to restart the computer. So. Uh, it's going to go into the second stage of setup, where it'll just be setting up hardware and drivers and stuff. Uh, this happens sometimes, just take out the CD-ROM, and then put it back in once you're back in setup. It's trying to boot off the, uh, boot off the CD-ROM, which it can't do. So I'm gonna put the ISO back in here. Um, now, please wait while setup updates your configuration files. This might take a few minutes. Now it says getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. Yeah, this is a screen that uh, displayed on Windows 95. Early builds of Windows 98 include an edited version, uh, which said very sloppily they added it to say uh, getting ready to run Memphis for the first time. Anyways, uh, let's put in our username. In my case, it's going to be Orbitron because that is me. Now it is setting up my hardware. Now this is going to take a few seconds. Now soon it's going to set up stuff like the control panel, Windows Help, and Microsoft, Ex Microsoft Exchange, which I enabled earlier in the video and I'll show you why. So I'll just be a few minutes and I'll see you guys after this is done. Now once it's going to go to configuring Microsoft Exchange, you can uh, cancel out of this. Oh, we don't need to configure it right now, it's just needed for Microsoft Athena. So just click cancel here. Now you can, yeah, click next. It's gonna take quite a while to close. And then click cancel here. And then, there we go, okay. Now it is going to reboot one final time for it to actually boot into the operating system. Now the boot screen in this build is the exact same as the boot screen used in the final version of Windows 95. Uh, this is expected because this is a very early build I'm assuming, and this is probably the only build ever compiled. Now there could be other ones, but we, we have no clue yet. So it is at the desktop now, we can click cancel, and now Windows 95 is now finalizing settings. It didn't play the Windows 95 startup sound, but that's okay. So, already the one difference that is most noticeable on the desktop here is when you hover over tabs and stuff like that, the text tur actually turns blue. Now, this is the first little glimpse of the Internet Explorer integration in the desktop, final in the scene in Windows 98. So, I'm just gonna set the screen resolution here 1024 by 768. Actually, Another change, show settings icon on taskbar, what this does is, uh, is it, ha it hasn't done it, okay, now it has, so what it does is it 
displays this little icon. Now if you right click on it, it shows all the different color modes here. Now this was seen in uh, updates for Windows 95 and Windows 98, if I recall correctly. And you can easily just switch color modes here. And it'll switch to 1280 by 1024. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's switch back. And now, Athena PIM. Actually, yeah, it treats all the desktop icons like links in web pages. So, for example, if I were to hover over, actually, yeah, another another thing I forgot to make notes about is if you hover over a, a desktop icon and and wait for a while, it actually uh, selects it. Now I thought that was interesting. I never noticed that. Um, so yeah, uh, Athena PIM. Now what is it? Well, Athena P PIM is basically what eventually ended up becoming Outlook Express in Windows 98. Uh, now if we click on it, it's gonna bug us to open a million things. Just cancel, cancel all this. It's gonna, it's gonna put up a bunch of errors and dialog boxes. You can just cancel all these. Now agenda, yep. Yeah. So this is Athena PIM. Now there's a contacts, there's white pages, uh, which is basically like, I don't know how to explain it, but there's also a calendar here. You can set reminders. So for example, you can set a reminder to uh, I'm just gonna write test. <laughs> now, it shows up here at 4:30 to do test. <laughs> uh, now we can go to messages. Now your message store is not available at this time. Uh, tasks. Your message store is not available at this time. Uh, but yeah, about Microsoft Athena doesn't do anything, I guess. About Windows 95. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's Athena. Now we can make a new message contact appointment task from the from the uh, menu bars. Although, if you go to view and toolbar, what this does is it adds basically what is seen in Internet Explorer here. Or not, uh, this seems to be just File Explorer, <laughs> uh, but this basically adds what was seen in Internet Explorer up to that point, which is a toolbar, which actually, hold on, if you go to a website, it should, nope, but it, it usually treats it like Internet Explorer. Uh, now if I go to... Explorer, View, and Toolbar. This adds the toolbar in the main Windows Explorer. Now, this this is all just separate views of stuff. Here, large icons. You can, you can delete stuff. This is also deleting. Oh, never mind. Okay, properties. There we go. Now, if, if we go to View and Options, um, hold on, I need to remember, single click activate, there we go. So if we, uh, apply that, now it takes one click to activate something, to open something, hence the name single click activate. Uh, so, for example, the C drive, I can click on that, it only takes one click to open. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Oh yeah, if I go to run and type in msinfo32, uh, there is system information here, which I thought was pretty cool. It still reports the version number is 4.0, although I'm pretty sure it's 4.1, the same as Windows 98. Uh, system DLLs, you can view you can view basically everything you want to view about your PC here. This this actually stayed in until Windows 11. Uh, this is still in Windows 11 actually. Although, a very stripped down version of this. Uh, system DLLs here, you can go to display, you can see the graphics driver you have, and yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so, what else is there? Oh yeah, 
So if you go into the control panel, there is a new power options. Regardless if your computer has like a battery or is plugged in like with a laptop or not. And uh, show suspend command on start menu. I'm not sure what this does. I don't think it's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's mostly for laptops. Oh yeah, never mind. You can suspend the session. Whoa. All it does is just beep at you and turns the screen black. Uh, now the mouse doesn't work. And the whole system has frozen! That is awesome! <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, suspend hangs the system and beeps at you. <laughs> um, anyways. There are multiple references to many different names that might have been planned for the operating system. I will show you those once the system actually boots up, um, which is right now. There should be sounds, I don't... Is the sound driver not installed? I guess the sound driver is not installed. Well, let's install it. Did it work? It probably won't work because it's Windows 95, but, uh, it should? And by the way, if you're enjoying this new type of content with the commentary, be sure to leave a like on this video, and maybe a comment as well, and I guess the sounds did not work. Oh yeah, okay, okay. What? Oh, oh, okay. So basically, hold on, I can, I'm gonna restart the machine in DOS mode real quick. Um. Uh, so there is a reference to Windows 96. Okay, okay, I guess it's not there, because, uh, because this is, a uh, Because this is a, uh, clean install. But, uh, if, but if you went to uninstall on uh, Nashville, it would show up as Windows 96. Um, I'll put a screenshot up now. Uh, last time I tried this build, I upgraded, so I did show that, but I guess on clean installs it doesn't. Um, there's another reference where like, this is basically what the Nashville code name. This is basically the only reference to Nashville in the entire operating system. So if we go in there, um, we can go into the MS DOS prompt, and it'll say Windows Na Microsoft Nashville 1981 to 1995. Go to Ver Nashville 4.10.999. That's the build string right there. Uh, let's get multimedia stuff installed. I guess I never installed that. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> That's kind of odd. Okay, so it's installed. I don't know why I installed it during the setup. I don't know why I didn't install it during the setup, actually. So now there's sounds. Okay, so whenever you click on something, whenever you highlight something, in Explorer, it makes a sound. This is new uh, in Nashville. So, this never stuck around. Uh, actually, it did in some places. It, I know it did in some places. Why is the Windows default sound scheme empty? Okay, now it's fine. So, let's uh, check out the sounds here. Oh, the gain's too quiet. There we go. Now, it, it, here it attempts to search for MSSound.Wave, that's the Microsoft sound uh, in uh, CD-ROM. I don't know, I've had that problem before. So... And 
also, another very minor change, I guess that new mail notification sound was changed from chimes to ding. I don't, I don't know if that's just a Mandela effect thing or if it was actually changed, but uh, that's pretty neat. Also, there are three sound schemes here, actually there's four sound schemes, Jungle, Musica, Robots, and Utopia. Uh, so yeah, that's basically... That's basically all I have to show. Uh, actually, no. Okay, um, so there's a... There is a very early USB support in here. Universal Serial Bus. I guess it was planned at one point, but there is no actual hardware listed here to actually install. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess USB support was planned for Nashville, but never stuck around as Nashville is never released and was later added in the OEM service release 2.1 for Windows 95 in 1997. So uh, that's basically all I have to share in this video for Nashville Build 999. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.